Hey team, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're going to write a program that takes text, converts it to voice. It's a great app. It's a feature that you can add to a lot of other programs. Hope you enjoy this video. Let me run through all the features so you understand what we're doing. One, I'm going to get a list of voices that are installed on your computer. These are the three speeds that I will support. And then I can increase the font size, decrease it. I can play it, I can get a subsection, I can pause it, stop it, and clear it. Let's see how we can do this. Let's paste it, and then hit play. Tab tracking hashtag by default. Pressing the tab within the source code. Let's press pause. Notice it just stops, and when it continues, the next word after character, I believe that will be or, will be heard. Or spaces depending on your indentation setting. And does not leave Stop. Now I can also come in here and just cherry pick. Notice, and does not leave open. And does not leave the open. The open. Thank you. Stop. Now, of course, I could come down here and listen. What that say? Move focus out. Okay, I got it. Thank you. And I can increase the font, decrease the font, change the voice. Speed it up. Listen again. Tap tracking hash. By default, pressing the tab within the source code file inserts the tab character. Stop. Clear. That's the app. So you've seen a demo, and maybe now you're interested in typing this. And what is the goal of you typing this? Well, one, you're going to learn XAML and learn C Sharp, .NET 6, and the speech object. It's pretty cool. Now, can you use this in other projects? Of course. Now, typing in this program, that source code becomes yours. Uh, I have no royalty, don't want no royalty. What I do want is you to kick it up a notch, add it to something that you've already written, make your programs better. In fact, make this program better. That's what my goal is. Now, it's going to take 30 minutes for me to go through the XAML and C-sharp code. And I don't recommend doing all that in one day. So maybe XAML in one day, it takes me about 15 minutes to explain that to you. And then the next day, just do a little bit at a time. You know, don't stretch yourself out over a program. And then next thing you know, you have mastered another tool, another utility. And then you can use that in other apps that you've written. And that's what I hope. Okay, team, we'll see you at the very end of this. If you do something amazing, why don't you give me a shout out and let me see what you've done. I'd appreciate it. All right, we'll see you at the end of this video. Let's open up Visual Studios. Notice that I'm using version 2022. Click on File, New, Project. Let's change the project name to Text2Voice, solution name Text2Voice, then press the Next button. Let us select .NET 6.0. This is the core version. Now that the project has been created, let's open up Frameworks. Let's right click on Microsoft Net Core. Hit Properties. Let's make sure the version is greater than 6.0.0. Okay, let us begin. This is the XAML. Let's make our first change here. I'd like to change the title, the height, and the width. Notice the title is text to voice, text reader. The height is 640 and the width is 1366. Let us take a look at an, the executing app. I've got a one zone, you know, this whole top line, and then I've got another zone, and then I have another zone. So I have kind of three zones we're going to need to code up. And notice that I kind of have a gutter between this first zone and the big text box. And then underneath the text box, I have another like little gutter. So let's code that up. So notice my first zone is 40, row definition height 40. And then I put a six pixel gutter. And then I say 300 star. That means like when I resize my form, notice that follows me. Right, it can go to infinity and beyond. And then uh, six for the other gutter, and then 40 for the bottom bar. Now that we have built up our major row definitions, the 40, 300 star, and 40, let's go build subgrids inside to house these other controls. Notice our first placement grid sub zero, that will go into this height equals 40. Then I will use grid dot column definitions and make the individual cells for those buttons and drop down combos we see on that first line. 
notice this width 400 is for the voice and then I'm gonna put a gutter and then 140 for the speed then a gutter and then for the plus and minus this is to change the font size I can do that within 120 and then there's another gutter here and then 300 star that's when you see when the app is running I display the current word put that over there our next section row definition height is 30 look here we're going to use a scroll viewer I'm going to name it SV stands for like scroll viewer and that's going to go on grid row 2 0 1 2 so that 300 star it'll be growing that scroll viewer will put a vertical scroll bar on the right hand side if the text is too long and our last section on this form is this bottom bar where we have play pause play selection stop and clear look here zero one two three four that fourth one I'm gonna make another collection a grid and then I'm gonna have the column definitions notice I want that to be horizontally in the center let's take a look at that notice that the controls are in the center and the height of this right here is 40 and notice above that is our six pixel gutter so that right there's that's the framework now we're going to be placing in the controls in each of these sections and finish this up notice in grid dot row four i said horizontal alignment is center and then i said width 120 that's for the play button then I'm going to put a little gutter six notice I put that same six after each control you know I always want it to be you know like equal spacing and then look here I do a 120 a 120 a 175 that's where we're going to put play selection and then 120 120 everything has a gutter now that we've got all of our controls laid out notice that we had one two three zones row definitions that we had to program up now I've given you the framework so make sure you have this much code I'm gonna go through here slowly so you can see that so we have all the code so let's make sure we have from lines 1 to 22 have all that typed in hit pause now make sure you got it continuing continuing on line 22 all the way down to 43 make sure you have all those lines and to finish it up I just continued from line 32 to 49 so so far in our XAML there are 49 lines of code now when we get done with this we're gonna have about 120 lines of code so we're kinda like halfway there so now we're going to work on our first row grid row sub zero Now notice these are the column definitions these are the widths for each now what we need to do is place our controls there Now notice we have a combo box a combo box what does a combo box mean that means a list of items and then we have a button two buttons and notice here this one says font larger font smaller and then I have a working zone over here I call that info so combo combo these are in a stack panel and then we have a just another uh, text block for me to write out some stuff so that is in our first zone grid row sub zero let's do that we drop in our first two combo boxes CBO voices that's in column 0 and column rate is in column 2 0 1 and 2 so 0 and 2 notice list of the voices that I've installed on my computer and these are the speed the rate of the words being said slower normal and faster now these two are inside of a stack panel let's do that you can see here we're using a stack panel on line 34 to 54 notice the orientation is horizontal grid dot column is four that we go back up and we say zero one two three four so 120 pixels notice I have my button first one and it's BTN button font bigger the content is a plus 
button smaller, content is a minus. These are kind of easy to understand. They're just two buttons inside of a stack panel. Make sure you have all the code between 33, 34, and 54. Press pause now. So that you understand this info zone, let us actually say, click on info and say play selection. Notice here the word info came here, and that is that name info, grid column six, font size 30. So whatever word we're highlighting down here in the text block, then I'll be putting it over here. And guess what? Our first grid is all done. So grid row zero, here are the column definitions, and here are all the controls. Two, text, uh, two combo boxes, a panel with two buttons, and a text block. Let us continue. Let us review line 60 and 61. Here we're saying, I'm gonna put a scroll viewer in there and that's gonna to go to grid row two. Let's look at that in production. So I pasted in that code for the stack panel and notice here is that control. Notice I have a, a vertical scroll bar and here is the text inside of a text box. And the beautiful thing about this is, you know, like this is a very, very smart control. So as we resize, look at the bar changing. So it's very, very smart. You know, we don't have to do very much programming. Microsoft has done it for us. Let's code up that text box. So from line 60 to 71, we've now embedded a text box control. Notice his name is input. Now here are the things that are kind of complicated about this, what we've done. Notice here I say preview mouse up. Now what's gonna happen is when I highlight a section and I just wanna display maybe one word or a one sentence or one paragraph, I have to know that the user is highlighting a zone. And what I'm doing is when he lets the mouse up, the user mouse up, I know that they have selected some, something in there. Now if that something's length is greater than zero, then I'm gonna tell him what I see. That's what that's all about. So here you can see that I'm accepting returns and tabs. I'm allow text wrapping and just the rest of these. Uh, here's one other one that you should probably know about. Line 69 is inactive selection highlighted enabled. So as you notice, when we ran the app, each word got highlighted. And when it's done playing, I don't want to see that no more. You know, make it go bye bye. And there is the text box control inside of a scroll viewer. Our last section is this zone at the bottom where we have play to clear. These are just buttons. And the only thing that's really important here is the click command because when something happens, we have to perform an action. So here I have play, pause, play selection, stop and clear. And notice those are all inside of the appropriate grid column. And notice that I have my gutter between each of those. So make sure that you have from lines 87 to 106, and those are the list of the five buttons. And guess what team? That's all the XAML for this application. It's pretty easy. At the very bottom, you should have 112 lines of code. This is a final review for all the XAML for this project. I'm going to go down lines when I hit pause, when I hit pause, when I say pause, pause and make sure you have all the code that you see on the form all the way down to the line number. Make sure on line 26 you see like a line like that. So here we're going to look at lines 1 through 26. Press pause now. Continuing from line 26, we're going to come all the way down to line 51. Press pause now. 51 down to 76, press pause now. 76 to 101, press pause now. And here is the end, 101 to 112. You now have all the source code for this project, well, all the XAML source code. 
Let's continue on the code behind now. Let's see how we can actually install some other languages in here. Imagine you spoke Italian. Let's install Italian and see how that can work. In that little box on the right, on the left-hand corner, it says uh, type here to search. Type in language settings. It's gonna pull up this form. And then notice here it says uh, preferred languages and then add a language, hit that plus symbol. And then come up here and type in Italy. Uh, do I see that? Yeah, how about we, uh, hmm, I, let me go with this guy right here. And notice that it has speak recognition and text to speech. That's what we want right there. For this to work, text to speech must be available. So click that and then say next. And then say install. Uh, I don't want that to be my default language and uh, everything is cool. So I'm gonna hit the go button. Now that might take you know a minute or two and I'll be right back when that's done. So Italian has been installed. Now let's see what we need to do to our app. When we come back to our app and we do a drop down combo, notice Italy is not in that list. Well, you can guess that we need to restart this. So let's stop this app, reload it, and we should see Italy in there. Let's do that. Let's see. So drop down, we have Elsa Italian. Okay, so that's great. So now let's go get some Italian text and let's play that and see what it sounds like. So I went out to Google Translate and then I took this paragraph that we took from Visual Code and I translated it to Italian. So let's remove this. And now let's make that bigger. And then let's uh, actually use Italian and then let's hit play. Sebbene lavorare nell'ambiente globale sia un modo semplice per iniziare, tale ambiente diventerà, nel tempo, ingombro di molti pacchetti diversi installati per progetti diversi. Tale disordine rende... Okay, so I'm not sure what that was saying, but hopefully that was Italian. Any Italian speakers out there? You know, that's, that comes from uh, Google Translate, so I had nothing to do with this. But it just goes to show you these languages that we can install can you know do text to speech if that little icon is available hopefully you understand that and now you can install as many languages as you want on your local computer and then uh, you'll be able to translate not translate but uh you know listen to all those languages and there you have the languages so now we have system speech synthesis it's all installed. Now we can start using it. Let's declare two variables on line 11 and 12. Notice speech synthesizer. And then what does this question mark mean? Well, that means that this variable is nullable. This list of installed voice is also nullable. You just saw me uh, install another language and that's what these are all about, these installed voices. And uh, I'm now gonna put that into a list. And that variable name is called voice list. Now in main window, this right here is the standard. That's a uh, Microsoft threw that in there for us. We don't need to even look at that. And now 1819, let's take these two variables and let's assign those to null. And now we need three functions. We need set voice rates, load install voices, and then initialize enable state. So these three functions kind of like set up our search bar for us. And here we have set voice rates. Notice I'm doing slower, normal, and faster. I'm gonna to have to be honest with you. The number of values is between negative 10 and 10. I'm only gonna do three. So maybe in your version, uh, I just can't hear all those. You know, I'm kind of like an older guy. So I don't hear that real, uh, real high pitch sounds. I just can't hear those anymore. And now I'm saying my selected index is just normal. Just right down the middle for an old guy like me. On line 23, you see I say load install voices. That's our next method. And notice that we're gonna create an object. I'm gonna initialize our list. And then I'm gonna call get installed voices. Now, you just saw that when we are loading up new ones and our app is running, we need to stop that app and then reload our app to actually see the new stuff. So. 36 to 55 is load install voices. This is our list and this is our combo box. 
and I'm just going to stay inside of this until I'm done. Now, if I return false, that means you don't have any languages installed. If I return true, you have at least one. Looking at main window again, notice that load install voices returns me a Boolean. I'm now going to send that Boolean to initialize enable state. Now initialize a label state. If it's false, that means I don't have any voices. You have to install those. And then I'm going to set the default value for those buttons on the bottom. Now that finishes up main window, this function, this is our main function. And just make sure that you have all the source code. I'll go slowly and let's make sure that you have it all in there. Notice from our usings down to line 24, press pause now. Then let's do 24 to 47. Press pause now. And then finishing up with line 69, we have our three functions. Let's continue. And our next two functions are functions used to go get the current value from those drop down combos. The first one is the get voice rate. Now remember, I only program for three. I'm using negative two, two, and four. Remember, it goes from negative 10 to positive 10. So, you know, you'd have to come up with different words here or just say, you know, one X, two X, or whatever you want it to say. But at 10, I, I believe it's just unintelligible. I couldn't even understand what they were saying. So three is fine for me. Let's make sure you have line 71 to 81. Press pause now. Our next function is get the voice name. Notice it's nullable. It's nullable because it's possible you don't have any installed. So notice if that combo box item has got zero, well, I'm, you're going to get a message. If they haven't selected one, you're going to get another message. Now, if I get past both of these, then I'm going to go through that list. And what I'm going to do is from that combo, I'm going to get that value and I'm going to assign that to this string variable CBO voice value. Now remember that has a bunch of dashes in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use split for those dashes and I'm going to put that into like an array. It's called buckets. Now if that list is not null, that means I have some values. And what I'm going to do is the goal is to get out voice info dot name. All the voices that are installed on your system will only be referenced by this voice info dot name. And that is how we call, you know, to change it from, you know, somebody that speaks English to Italian is by the, the name. Let us begin at line 83. And we're going to come down to line 105, this for loop. Press pause now. And you can see that 105 there, and we're gonna finish that out at 116. Press pause now. And there you have the method get voice name. Our next method on line 118 to 126 is initialize synthesizer. Notice I'm gonna create a new variable, and then on line 21, 22, and 23, these are called delegates. So this is a function. And I'm saying, hey, if the state change, I want you to call that function. When the speaking is complete, I want you to call that function. And as I process each word, I want you to call this function. Now, above, we have get voice name. You saw that. We're going to go get the name. And I'm going to say select voice. That's part of the synthesizer object. And then get voice rate. That's going to be assigned to rate. And there you have initialize synthesizer. That is on line 118 to 126. Press pause now. As you can see at 118 initialize synthesizer, I have three delegates, state change, speak completed, speak progress. Notice these are our methods. These are called delegates. And when this raises state change, I'm going to call this method. When the speaking is complete, I want to call this method. And when I process each word, I want to call this method. Let's take a look at each of these. Now, there are several states 
I'm only looking for when it's paused. I'm making sure our object is not equal null, and if it's not null, I'm going to pause that. Now you've seen a demo where I press the pause button and everything stops. And then I can sit resume and it will continue. But all we're going to look for is this state changed and paused. 128 to 139, press pause. Now, speak complete, that's kind of obvious. When I'm done with the document, you know, like doing word by word, as soon as I hit that last word, I come in here. Now, if this object is not null, let's dispose that and set it to null. I then have to reset the pause button. I want it to be pause, the save button enabled to be true. Remember the info.txt, that place on the top in zone one, I want it to be string.empty. And then that is inactive selection highlight enabled to false. I don't want to see that anymore. Then we're going to change back the voices and the rates to enabled. Remember, when you're using this app, you cannot change the voice while I'm reading it out loud. You know, we have to be in some kind of stop mode to kind of like reload that. Now, here's kind of like a key thing. If the input.selected text length is greater than zero, that means the user has highlighted some text. And now it looks like I want to, you know, play selection. So I'm going to make that enabled. Now, if that selected text is not like it is zero, then it's false. And there you have speak complete. Hit pause now and make sure you have 141 to 160. And here is the last of the delegate functions, speak progress. So for every word, it comes into this method. And I'm going to use that speak progress event arg e. And notice I'm going to get the text. That's the actual word. Now notice I also use the character position. And that allows me to do that highlighting in the app. Let's run that app and look at this one more time. Now, before we look at this feature, let me tell you what's going to happen. So here's my text. Now, when I hit the play button, what's going to happen is this speak progress, that's going to execute. And it's going to like highlight each one of these words one at a time. And at the same time up in this area, what is going to happen is that individual word will be printed here. So let us try to execute this play and see what happens. If you want to retrieve the list of all you can see it doing one word at a time and up here as well. Okay, perfect. Now notice that when I do a mouse down and I highlight a section of words and I say play selection, I'm actually going to be doing the else clause. So let's play this. Okay, perfect. Now let's go back and look at that code. So you just saw how speak progress works. Now, when I hit the play selection is enabled as false, that means I'm actually, I hit the play button. So I'm going to set that input box, you know, that green box, I'm going to set it to focus. And then I'm going to say input select, and I'm going to be using that second parameter, E, E dot character position. And then for the length of that text, notice that I'm printing that text to the info box on the uh, top section. And that gives us the top. Now the second one is a little bit more complicated. When I highlight text inside of the text box, it goes into another thing that's called selected text. And then I can get the selection start and the selection length. And then that will highlight it as well. So this right here is you know pretty powerful and it's a pretty nice feature. Let's make sure that you have lines 162 to 177. Hit pause and let me know when you're ready to continue. And these are two little baby functions. Font bigger, font smaller. Input is the name of that green box. The font size less than 60, increment by two. If the font size is greater than 10, then decrement by two. Press pause, get both of those typed in. Button say underscore click 
Notice that we test to see if our variable is not null, and if it's not null, let's make it null. Dispose it, set it to null. Then if input text, the actual green box, length is zero, you know, the user, he's got to give me some input. Then I'm gonna create a new object. We saw that above, we already typed that in, and then test it one more time, make sure the variable got created appropriately. And then on line 213, we're going to speak async. So I'm going to use that input text, and then I'm going to start telling you word by word. Then using those delegate functions, I'm going to perform those actions as well. So just stay inside of here. Now the beautiful thing is because we're doing async, all of our other buttons are still able to use. For instance, change font size, pause, resume, stop, and clear. They're all available. Here you can see that once I begin speaking, I want to no longer allow the person to change the voice and the rate. That doesn't even make sense because that would never happen. And I'm going to make the pause button true and the you know play a selection false. And there you have say click. Notice it starts on 195 and ends on 220. The next method, pause. That is when they click on the pause button. Now, if the pause button content, you know, the label that's in that button, it says pause, well then I wanna make sure that that isn't null. And if it's not null, then I'm gonna say synthesizer pause. That's actually gonna pause, you know, saying words. And then I'm gonna change the content on that button to resume. Now, when they come back in there, even though it says pause here, it's the text is resume and now I'm going to set it back to pause. So notice I say synthesizer resume. So there you have button pause. Let's look at line 222 down to 242. On the third button play selection, now I'm just making sure that selection length is greater than zero. Now what does that mean? That means like you see I put my mouse down and I pull over. I highlighted that. Now that is saying, is that selection length greater than zero? Now if it is, that's cool. Now notice here on line 248, see selected text? So when I move my mouse across like this, it actually goes into this object right here. So input is the name of my control, and then selected text, that is where that highlighted value will go to. Now notice here I have a helper function. So this is the button, and then it calls place selected text. So I send in that selected text and I make sure that we start off with a, a new synthesizer, right? I dispose it and I set it to null. Then I initialize it. And then if I have a good object, I then try to speak async. Now you know that this also has my three delegates. So I will also, you know, count positions, show words, and do that highlighting. So this is pretty incredible code right here. So from 244 down to 263, you can use the uh, play selection. When a user clicks on button stop, well, I'm just trying to end things. So I set it back to some states that uh, were kind of like uh, how we started initially. And you know, like the button content is back to pause. And then I set that to false, you know, the enabled. I don't want them to click on that. I set the save, you know, the uh, play button to true. The info, that text in, in the uh, first grid, I want that to be set to empty. If it's been highlighted, I want to like uh, turn that off for now. I don't want to see that right now. And then I, I allow them to change the voice and the rate, you know, setting the is enabled back to true for both of them. And then for the play selection, the enabled to false, and it's possible that they have something already selected. I'm gonna set the selection length to zero and the selection start to zero. So you'll see the cursor go back to the very beginning. And then of course, do the old test, dispose and set to null. And that is stop. So notice that begins on line 265 and ends on 284. Press pause and make sure you get that typed in. Now clear, I'm just, as you could think, I'm kind of like setting the whole program back to like an initial state. 
and I'm uh, clearing out that input, you know, the green box. I'm setting those buttons to initial states. I'm making sure that my drop down combos work. And then I'm disposing our object for, you know, listening to words. That's button clear. It starts on line 268 and it finishes on 302. Guess what team? We have one function to go and we're done with the code behind. Now this function input preview mouse up. Now let's just stop for a moment. Do you remember when I said this is very important on that text box? Remember that green box? Preview mouse up. So in this event, when that mouse goes up, I say, is that synthesizer equal null? Now if it is null, what does that mean? Well, that means like uh, the user probably is messing around with uh, his mouse. He's doing this and nothing's happening right now. But now I say, is some of that selected text, is there some values in there? Now, if that's greater than zero, I'm going to enable that play button. Now, if that is not greater than zero, I'm going to disable that. Does that make sense? Now, if this is not null, then I'm just going to set that to false. So this is kind of like a, you should never execute this, but this is just worst case scenario. And there we have the input preview mouse up that allows me to capture for the uh, play selection that begins on line 304 and finishes on 322. Now, of course, this one takes us all the way back up to the top and that's right underneath namespace. I can hit control and the curly and that is what allows me to go between these. So control curly allows me to go between these. And there you have it, team. That is all the source code. I'm now going to start at the top and work my way down slowly. And let's make sure that you have 324 lines of C Sharp source code. Now, we have to work together on this. I'm going to tell you the lines, and you make sure that all your source code is on the same. Notice we're going to do from lines 1 to 25. Press pause now. I'm going to make line 26 on the top when we continue. Notice we have line 26, which was that blank line, all the way down to line 53. There's only one more line in this function, that's the close curly, and that's uh, two more lines below it, and you'll see that lines 54 and 55. But press pause now and get us down to line 53. When I go to the next one, I will be stopping online. I mean, starting on line 54. Press pause. And you can see that that closed that first, that function that we were just working at. And now we're going to go all the way down to line 81. Press pause now. I will be continuing at line 82, and that is a blank line. 82 is a blank line. I'm going to stop on 110, and it's the if v sub 0 equal equal v sub b. I will be continuing on 111 when we come back. Press pause now. Notice that we're going to go from 111 to 139. We have the end curly on a delegate function state changed. 111 to 139. Press pause now. I will be continuing on line 140. 140 is a blank line. Notice I'll be going down to line 168. That puts us inside of speak progress, the open curly. Press pause now. I will continue on line 169. 169 down to 196. Notice that puts us at the open curly of button say. I will be continuing at line 197. Press pause now. Lines 197 down to 220. I'll be continuing on 221. Press pause now. 221 was a blank line. Then we have the function button pause click. Notice that we're going to go 221 all the way down to 242. Press pause now. 
I'll be continuing on line 243. 243 was a blank line. Then we have button play selection, play selected text, and then we're going to make a stop at 263. I will continue at 264. Hit pause now. 264 was a blank line. Let's take it to this next function. We're going to stop at 284. I will continue at 285. Press pause now. 285 is a blank line, and then we're going to go down to 302. I will continue on 303, which is a blank line. Press pause now. And this right here is the rest of our program. We'll go from 303, and the last line of code should be 324. Now that is all the C source code. Your program is ready to go. Let's stop this for a moment. Let's compile and make sure that we got everything working. Let us build the program. Rebuild. And notice, successful, no warnings, and the program is good. Now this was written with .NET Core, so that means you should pretty much be able to port this app over to the other environments. Here you can see I have compiled and I'm running the app and this is your version. Notice that we have it all the way down to Italian. During this video I showed you how to install um, new languages. I've also told you about there are minus 10 to positive 10 values for this, the rate. So use that appropriately. Here's uh, make a font bigger, make it smaller, and then all of our buttons. Let's go get some text to make sure this program works. Here is our text. Let's make that font bigger. And then let's hit play. If you want to retrieve a list of all these Pause. Resume. This is programmatically for Windows using C sharp. You could use the install voices class. Nice. Let's highlight something. Play. You could. Oh, could you? Let's hit stop. Let's hit clear. And that is the app. Great job, guys. And there you have it, team. Congratulations. This was a lot of code to type in. Not as much as the last project I did, but uh, this took a while to write. You know, it takes even longer to make these videos. Now, I hope you appreciate this and uh, maybe type it all in and maybe even kick it up a notch. And if you do finish, uh, if you could like send me like an email with pictures of your apps or maybe even a video, I'd appreciate that. Let me see what you've done with this. Now remember, all this code is yours. Whatever you do with it is, is your business. Uh, I appreciate you supporting my channel, you know, watching the videos, thumbs up, uh, leaving comments, and even subscribing. Subscribing is only good if you want to keep coming back and seeing more videos from me. Uh, but I appreciate whatever you're doing. Uh, and that's it. Hopefully you have a great week, and I'll see you back in my next video.